Hi, John. Morning. Hi, Steve. Yeah. How's things today? Oh, really good. I, I saw your blog the other day about the framing members, you know, the cut, the sawn timber type thing. Oh, yeah, thank you. And, and um, well, thanks for mentioning me. But I, I wanted to show you what we do over here with these. I mean, it's quite common over here to use these kind of manufactured timber beams. Yeah. They're really high quality. They're manufactured in a factory. They're absolutely certain for the span of these things because they're a manufactured timber these days. And they're really light so that it, a, a builder can pick up one of these really long span things and he can manipulate it on site. He can move it around so much easier than a, a big solid lump of timber. Absolutely. But they're strong. Yeah. Now, um, Victorix has the framing member tool, which has got some, you know, I don't know if you remember, it's got the, you know, create joist from poly, yeah. really quick to put your framing out, and you can use a custom profile. Okay. So what I wonder was, do you want me to show you how to make a custom profile like one of these ones? Yeah, please do. Okay, well, let's start with a, well, let's start with a simple one, like the 45 millimeters, 200 millimeter overall, and then we'll go to the other ones. Okay. So this is 45 by 45 millimeters. So there's the first one. Yep. I need another copy down here. So I can either drag it or I can offset it. Uh, the important thing though is I need to get it exactly the right width. So I'm just gonna, I had a little trouble earlier on, so I'm just gonna draw a little line, make sure I get that duplicate array. 200 I think is what I needed. Okay, went the wrong way. Let's do that again. Missed the minus off. Yeah, I should have put a minus in. So there it is. Yep. So I need another copy of that one there because that's 200 apart. Oh, I've lost my option key. Okay, there we are. Now what I need in between those two is my plywood. Yeah. So I'm going to create a plywood 12 millimeters wide and it's Probably, I'm just guessing here, but it's 200 minus 90 yeah. is the right is the right size for that. I'll just try it and see. Now, in reality, that bit of, that bit of plywood is actually embedded into the top and yeah, bottom cords. Again, yeah. But it doesn't matter because Vectorworks is not going to show the individual parts like that. Okay. It's going to join it together as a 3D object. And so one of the tricks is you can even just add those together because that's what Vectorworks is going to create for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just add surface on it. Yeah. So the second step is that we have to create that into a symbol. Create the symbol. So this was high span. I think with a capital S. Let me just check that again. High joist. Yeah. So. So it's a high joist, and it's a two hundred by forty five. Now, it depends whether you want to put the 45 first or the 200 first. When you've got a big range of them, you might want to go 45 by 200 so that the, the width comes first. Yeah. And then you get a whole bunch of them. Yeah, together. Really yeah. important. Play and project. Uh, sorry, the next mouse click there. And I'm not going to worry about putting that on a custom class. If you want to, I would choose none. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to put that on a custom class. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Active class. So let's just click OK. My insertion point wants to be the top center. Yeah. Now it's created that object. Now if I use the framing member, which is in my detailing set, framing member, so click there, click there, and I get the opportunity here to use a custom profile. Down the bottom here I can choose my custom profile from my top level, my high joist. Yeah. OK, OK. Now, when I change to a 3D view, that should be a high joist. Cool. Now, it's really quick. If you set up a whole bunch of those custom profiles and you store them in the right place, it is really quick to change from one to the other. Yeah. And you started so off as a, as a layer plane, so it would become a 3D tool anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's well. It, the the nature of the framing member is when you go to three D view, it's going to make that object three D. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the next, so the next one, the 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 next set, they're sixty three wide, and forty five high. And I could try doing the duplicate array, but I'm I'm worried that I'm going to get it wrong again. So I'm just going to check my heights. 
63 by 240. So let's duplicate that down. Okay, and then I can drag a copy of this one down to there, and then my plywood again. So 12, and it's 240 minus 63 minus 63. Yeah, that's such a good way of um, making sure you get the right size. Ah, and now I got it wrong. <laughs> he says, and he got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So it, is, it is a good, good way of, of getting the calcs to work for you. It is, if I got it right. I probably should have only done 163. Yeah. No, I can't remember. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about it because I've created that one. Let's create the next symbol. And this is a high joist. And this is 63 by 240. Yeah. So all of that's still the same. Next mouse click, click there, and save that one again. Now one of the things you can do, of course, is you can, uh, I could probably ungroup this. So um, I've converted that to a groups, become a polyline. Don't forget you can use your reshape tool. And with the right mode, which I want to use that rectangular mode, Drag a marquee around there and then move it. So how much do I need to move it by? Well, the next one's 300, so I guess that's 60 millimetres, isn't it? Yep. Minus 60. So there's the next one. Oh, such a smart move. Make that into a symbol. And that's the high joist. Uh, that's all in capitals, isn't it? I joist 63 by 300, I think it was. Yeah. Next mouse click, click there, and OK. If I go to my my resource browser, yeah. you can also duplicate these. So don't forget you can duplicate it. And the next one is 63 by 360. Yeah. So by 360. Now it doesn't automatically scale that object, so you do have to edit the 2D part of that. But that's easy, as you said before. And then do the same thing again. So that, move it, minus 60, that's the next one done. And so you just gradually go through the whole set, doing yeah. all the high joists that you want. As soon as you've done them, though, what you need to now do is select those and then export those to your library. Yeah. And that makes it real easy. So from now on, don't forget, if we go zoom, let's just zoom out a little bit. So you've got a building. So there's part of the building. There's another part over here. And I'll just add those together. And then you've got, under AEC, you've got the framing command. Create joist from poly. So you can put in the center of the joist, the size. I don't want to go through all of these. I just want to show you how quick it was to do it. Yeah. And so from the center of there, so I'm going to uh, spacing mine from the center. There they all are. So there's all my joists. And then you can say custom profile. And then we get to choose our custom profile, which is I one of these. Oh. So let's put in my high joist 63. Bingo, there they all are, all as high joists. And if I need to change them, so the engineer comes back and says, oh, no, no, for, for that span, you've got to increase the size. Now, notice that the, I, I use the top of my joist as the insertion point. Yeah, so the, it's the bottom that moves all the time. So it's the bottom that moves. Yeah, yeah. so if you set your floor levels and everything else, it's all done. Yeah, because the floor doesn't change. The, you know, the, normally yeah. the, the, the depth changes of the joists. And I just thought that was kind of a neat trick, and I just thought it would follow up from what you were talking about in your yeah, blog. Yeah, absolutely, John. I'll, um, I'll post that up as soon as I can. Many thanks for that. You're welcome. See you, Steve. See you, John.